Okay, that's great. Hi, I'm Mark Roberts. Welcome to my YouTube station. Hi. Hello, welcome to my video. Um, it's been a while and uh, I've moved house. I'll admit it, I've moved house and that's what this video is about in a roundabout way. I've had to set up a little mix room in a bedroom, uh, which is kind of what I normally do. And I thought it might be interesting to some of you to document this and have a little chat about kind of what, what the things are that I have to take into consideration and the bits and bobs that I do to set it up so that I can get working and, and hear what's going on from my speakers. These might be the sort of spaces that um, some of the people watching these videos might be working in. And it's, it's kind of just the way things are a bit more now, um, right up to your real pro mixes and stuff. Have, have rooms at home, smaller rooms. It's not like back in the day when you'd have some huge multi-million pound acoustically designed room. I'm not going to go into majorly kind of scientific detail. There's plenty of other resources out there if you really want to delve in about acoustics. Might be something I'll do more in, in, in future, but um, I'm going to show you the bits that I do that I feel are enough to get me up and going. As a side note, what's, what's really exciting about this for me is that um, I'm here at the moment so that I can do up my loft and that's going to be more of a permanent setup and I'm going to try and go to town a bit more when it comes to this stuff with the acoustic treatment and things. So with any luck that's going to be a really nicely tuned room um, which, which will be great So I've, I've not really had that privilege before. But for now I'm going to hand you over to me in the past setting this room up and then at the end I'll, I'll discuss some of my findings with you. Hello. So uh, this is a kind of vlog, isn't it? So I need to move around a little bit, make it seem really real. Basically, I've got to turn this into a usable mixing room. Just spent the last uh, couple of days moving. The rest of the house is pretty much sorted. But um, yeah, got to get this room going. As you can see, there's a load of crap, a load of more crap there. It's all got to be kind of organized. And then um, I've got to get the thing into a state where I can actually hear what I'm doing. Um, it's not going to be perfect. No mix room is perfect. Even the, even the kind of freshly designed ones have got their flaws. But hopefully I can get this to a stage where I can carry on working. I need to be up and working tomorrow. Um, got a combination of things to do. So first I have to chuck a load of stuff in this cupboard, which has already got some amps and bits and pieces in it. There's all these um, panels here which have travelled with me for quite a while now. It's enough to sort of dampen down uh, the room a little bit. This is just about the least ideal room in terms of it's a it's a square box. Things just reverberate off and cancel out and often in the listening position or well strictly speaking in the centre of the room I suppose is where they're going to you're going to get things cancelling out so you have a hole in your in your particularly in your low end or whatever frequency your room resonates at i guess so you have to try and minimize that there's certain things you can do to do that one of them is the treatment so this will stop some of the reflections they're not quite thick enough to really control the low end that much but i'm going to do what i can and kind of layer them a little bit try and look after the mirror points so the points that are directly you know where the sounds directly bouncing off back into your ears and do what I can. Another thing I think strictly speaking you're supposed to be a certain amount into the room but I've, I've found with, with really small rooms that sometimes it is actually best to just be quite close to the back wall but we'll see I need to experiment a little bit and I'll get it as good as I can kind of manually and then I'm going to have get the old sonar works out and have a go with that. Um, see what I can do. I've got rid of the big desk now. I'm just using kind of comparatively minimal setup. I've got this sweet ass funky junk um, summing mixer. So it's a 32 channel summing mixer that everything goes through. It just gives it a little bit of analog flavor. 
um, similar to what something like VCC would do with the slate stuff or um, Waves do one as well. And now UA, UA, Universal Audio, do one as well with their new software that just gives you the kind of feel of going through a desk. Um, this one is really cool because you can change the op amp going in and then you can also change the transformer type here. So it's got, um, are these going to be all backwards? I don't know, I can flip it, can't I? Um, Khan Hill transformers, which is kind of Neve thing, Lundahl, classic. I think the classic is like an API type thing, but basically it gives it a bit of flavor. Then I also go through this overstayer, stereo voltage control peak limiter compressor. Um, it's a real, real tasty thing that for, you can do really extreme cool compression and distortion and and things like that but it's i also use it as a bus processor it just adds a little bit of harmonic content and things like that but hey i'm rambling a bit now a lot because i'm really really tired yeah wish me luck if i could find my camera i'd do one of those those cool um time lapse things and be setting up this room but you know what can't be bothered Nice. Right. That was great, wasn't it? Uh, so, yes, welcome back to the present, if you consider the present the beginning of the video. So, since I filmed that, I've been in here three weeks, I think, and it was one of the smoother transitions I've had in terms of moving to a new mix room. So, to sort of tell you what I did, I got some of these panels, and these are the ones that have kind of travelled with me. It's a bit of a hodgepodge collection but it it serves a purpose if you don't know these are just wooden frames with rock wall slabs and some material over the top and the idea of these is just to kind of absorb some of the frequencies stop the ref reflections coming back off the wall i've got some panels on this side they're sort of two two or three deep and they're about that yay thick um so Add that together it's about yay thick and then I've got some down here though this side was a little bit more difficult because I've got a window but um, I, I just prop something up on the window doesn't look pretty but serves a purpose um, there's a couple at the back there that you can't see but trust me then I've got I think there's two two big ones behind the speakers there one up high which isn't doing a hell of a lot I don't think uh, the corners I tried to get as much in as I could because those are kind of areas where you do want to try and absorb some some low frequencies. So I stuffed quite a lot in that corner. The the difficult thing with this room is making things symmetrical, um, but it's just the situation I'm in. I've just got to live with that. So did these mirror points, and then I've got what's called a cloud up above, um, which is just a single one of these these frames with the rock wall in and the material again it's just hung from the ceiling and that's just right over the desk so we're covering all those those mirror points and trying to absorb some bass frequencies in the corners i've got my speakers set up how i like them got them the right height um, the distance apart is worth thinking about um, you see a lot of people that have got their kind of speakers in kooky positions in corners and things if you can put them you know you want this this equilateral kind of triangle so facing like this towards your head in a triangle and generally I think it's advised and it sounds good to me to kind of have that triangle going just just past your head so they're firing kind of just behind your head I've also been using these iso acoustic pucks under the speakers that essentially um, help to decouple your speakers from the stands they were very useful when I had my speakers on the bridge of my desk because it kind of the sound used to resonate through the desk. So I got all that set up and I had a listen 
and I was pleasantly surprised because I was kind of dreading how this room was going to sound because it's smaller than my old room and it's more of an equal box sort of shape so it has no right sounding better but I think it does actually sound better than my old room or, or maybe I was just bored of my old room I'm pretty sure it sounded better the reason that box shape isn't good is because when you've got parallel walls you've got the the sound bouncing off those walls and coming back and that's when it kind of cancels out and you get these standing waves and you get holes in your frequency response and that's what we want to avoid essentially because if your your room is cancelling out say 100 hertz um, you're naturally going to want to put more 100 hertz in your mix and then it might sound great in your room to you but then you go and play it in the car or somewhere else and it's got way too much 100 hertz so we're aiming for a flat frequency response here and you know you can't really emphasize enough when it comes to mixing forget plugins and stuff if you haven't got your monitoring sorted out then you know it, it's lying to you so you're going to have to overcome some obstacles like like i said even a, a professionally treated room you're going to have to learn it to some extent so this isn't this isn't about making it perfect it's just about trying to do what you can within your means um, so yeah, I was really happy with that, how that sounded actually. And then I did the sonar works and I, I took it to the next level um, and I figured out how to use the um, time lapse on my portable telephone, as you can see here. Very visually stimulating to the eye, as I'm sure you'll agree. Sonar works I've been using for a few months and it's really nice just sort of finishing touch, I think. I wouldn't recommend trusting sonar works to just sort out an untreated room for you I think you should try and do everything you can to kind of control your room before using sonar works and even if that's hanging some duvets up just to control those early those high frequency splashy reflections that you get off the walls um, do that stuff first make some traps if you can buy you can buy traps for fairly reasonable price then, then think about Sonar Works, and it just kind of adds that finishing touch. Or just it just tries to flatten out your frequency response. Um, as you can see, this room has got some holes in it, and it's trying to sort those out for me. And it does; it, it works really well. Um, you see a lot of rooms uh, that have got that sort of egg egg carton-looking foam on it on on the walls and things. And that stuff has its place, but you just have to remember it's about this mass that that you need to absorb frequencies that is going to help with those really high frequency reflections but that's all it's going to help because it just hasn't got the mass to absorb the longer wavelength hopefully that was interesting and if you've got any questions or any thoughts uh comments section so i'm going to be documenting the big room as we go and next week i'm going to make a video release a video I'm gonna make it much sooner than, than ne next week I'm gonna do a video that's also about these it's on the same kind of path but it's it's assuming that you've done this this part and then um, some little tips that will hopefully help your mixes to translate better some things that I found useful and, and stuff I've picked up of other people so tune in next week or if you're watching in the future, watch the other as yet unnamed video. And yeah, hope you enjoyed that. Have fun. Tune in again. Watch another video if you want to. All right. Bye.